Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of dimensionality reduction, guys. So basically, in a data, whenever there are many dimensions, it is really complex to solve those kind of problems, guys. So assume that in our decision trees, I think most of you have listened to the decision tree problem, right? Okay, so as the futures increase, like the temperature, the humidity and all those things, as they increase, the complexity of the problem will also increase, right? Yes, so that is the reason why the dimensional dimensionality reduction is most important because whenever the data is having some unwanted data, all those things can be removed and the dimensions can be reduced guys. Okay, so dimension redu reduction or dimension reduction, sorry dimensionality reduction or dimension reduction is the transformation of data from higher dimensional space into lower dimensional space. So basically if you are having two properties like height and weight, if you remove any one of them, that is called as, and if you remove one of them and if you make it only as a one parameter, that is called as a dimensionality reduction. So we reduced one dimensionality there. Okay, so into lower dimensionality space so that the lower dimensionality represents the same meaningful properties of original data. So basically even after this reduction, the properties of the data should be same guys. Because if you changed someone into someone, both of them should be same, right? Yes. So in the same way, if you reduce, so okay, let us take an example. So if you reduce someone's weight, even after reduction of weight, both of them should be same, right? Both of them should, both of them should be the same person, right? Yes. So in the same way, the original data properties should be the same. Okay, so there is a curse with the dim dimensionality they say guys. So basically whenever you are reducing or increasing the dimensionality, there are both disadvantages and advantages. So when you are increasing the dimensionality, you are giving more and more clarity about the data. But at the same time, if you increase it overly, you are indirectly decreasing the quality or you are overly increasing the data, overly increasing the quality of the data. Okay, so if you want me to give you an example, so assume that I asked you to recognize an orange. Okay, you started saying it should be in or around a circular shape. Okay, so this is a good property. Okay, so let us continue. So then you told it should be in orange color. I told, wow, that's a really a good quality, right? Yes. So after that, you told that it should be smooth. Okay, I don't know exactly it will be smooth or hard. So I'm just assuming it will be smooth, right? Yes, it will be smooth. Okay, so then you start, you got these three properties and you are satisfied, but you want more and more clarity. Okay, then you told it's a radius it should be exactly 15 centimeters. Okay, so how many oranges will be having 15 centimeters guys? Isn't it a funny dimension you say? Yes. So these kind of advanced future. So basically you went into this orange and you took a scale and calculated it. So that's not a good thing, right? So you are going in detailed. Hence, some other orange which is too small or some other orange which is too big will not be recognized, which is a bad thing about it, right? So here you increased the dimensions, but it ended up being a problem. So this is a curse with dimension. So basically you should build a threshold and once you reach that, you should stop increasing them, okay? So as the dimensions increase, the futures of data set increases. We think that the model generated will be best, but that's only correct up to some point so based up to threshold so once we cross it we reduce the power of the model so basically we are even reducing the power of the model guys okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea on this so in the next lecture we'll be discussing about one of the most important method that is pca that is principal comp component analysis so using that okay so using that we are going to reduce a dimension of a data set guys i'll be taking an example and i'll be solving it okay yes so after that lecture we'll be going through one more method that is a linear discriminant analysis so these are the two methods which we'll be discussing in this unit guys okay these are the last two topics you can say okay yes so in the next lecture we'll be discussing about the principal compound analysis so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching